It all started two years ago when I bought this 1989 R31 Skyline for six grand. Kitted with a non-turbo RB30, a roll cage, an S13 front end, a whole turbo conversion kit, plus more. It was a bloody marketplace bargain. Now I bought this with the purpose of learning to drift on a budget and to get more experience building cars. So you'll be watching from the perspective of a noob. So, we've got a lot of work to do with the deadline of less than three weeks for my first ever drift event. <laughs> <laughs> we have arrived. Look who it is, eh? You might be wondering, what's going on? Where is he? What's he doing? Well, basically, since I was still building my shed, I didn't actually have a place to work on the 31. However, some boys have offered to give a helping hand. So good day to the boys. What's going on? Where you going, boys? Tired ass. You want to come the juice? How'd the weather turn out last night? Um, over it wasn't here? windy, which is alright. So I got a tree next to my house that kind of is on the perfect B line for if it does fall, it will definitely kill us. Welcome to Shockworks, a family owned suspension shop located up in the mountains east of Melbourne. These blokes are known for their top of the line shocks. I actually met these guys through Chris, my mate who I've worked on the 33 with. Chris has been working with these fellas for over 10 years. To make it confusing, there's another fucking Chris. Meet Chris O'Brien, in charge of track and drift, and overall sick cat. Now, the 31. Got some goals and a deadline to hit. As I said earlier, we've got to get this thing track and drift ready for my first drift event. And this time, we're going to be on the big boy main track. So one of the first things we did was suss the engine's misfire. We checked the timing and sanded the contacts in the distributor for a better connection. We then chucked the 31 on the hoist to give an overall inspection of the car. We're going to build a list to find out what to do so we can get this thing up to scratch. So one thing I want you to consider mm -hmm. is when you're learning and also it's more fun is mm -hmm. you jump in rebel strips. And even though it looks super fucking cool right now, mm -hmm. if you keep it at this height, if you hit a ripple strip, you can possibly smash your sump in. What's a ripple strip? Fucking side of the racetrack, mate. Little red and white. Yeah. Oh, around, those things. Round bit, oh, especially yeah. down the hill, it's really steep. Oh, okay. And if you half climb one, the first contact outside of your sway bar is your sump. Right, yeah. Oof. Cars look cool, but you hit a ripple strip and you pull your front bar off. Yeah. Or you smash things. My car looks like shit now, but. All weekend, I was jumping river strips and the car's not damaged. So even though people are gonna hate it because it doesn't look as cool, yeah. especially when you're first figuring out for the first 12, 24 months, have the car a little bit higher, and that way if you do run off the track, you don't destroy the car permanently. Yeah, I highly agree. Happy with that? Yeah, fuck that. You're like, nah, the likes, bro. <laughs> I used to like him, but no, he raced his fucking 31, 10 yeah. He's a bit of a loser. <laughs> So we continued inspecting the 31 and building the to-do list. First thing I'm gonna try and do is get the motor not starting like shit. Yep. O2, you reckon that's what it is? Do you reckon that's a large part of why because it's just not sensing anything? So it's just sending fuel. It's going, you're running lean, dark fuel. Do we assume that might be what's fucking causing the horrible miss then? It's that probably plus math. So first thing we wanna do is get your homeboy to weld a nut onto those headers. Second thing, we want to get an exhaust manifold gasket and then fix that exhaust manifold properly because it's already leaking like shit, so let's do it all in one. What else are we checking engine-wise? One thing we are going to do, remove that C condenser. 
Yeah. That's three kilos, mate. That's the difference between snapping fours and fifth, mate. <laughs> Let's take it up. Let's have a look, hey? Okay, so you can see the auto. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, see how the cross member doesn't line up? Oh, That's yeah, yeah. The auto one's different. That's definitely going back on, boys. Oh, yeah. Now yeah, we're talking. So, it has nothing that we need. This is all to make it turbo. turbo. This yeah. is nothing to make it do these. Yep. Let's take a whistle. It's as low as I would want to go while being practical. It doesn't look cool, but that's why literally every 31 does this. Cool. All right, well, should we pull the front shocks out first and do that? Yeah, okay, yeah. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, no. Nah. I wasn't going to put coilovers in this, but I might put coilovers in this. <laughs> what is that? Because that's not enough droop, mate. That's oh, what right. we want the car to be driving at, not drooping at. I think some front shocks are going to have to go in this. Here's the trick though. Hmm. Well, the less droop you have in the front end, the less that wants to kind of get up on you, the less weight's going to be on that back wheel, and the less weight's going to be on the back wheel. Less traction. Less traction. Exactly. Yeah. So by reducing the front droop, you're going to reduce traction. Yeah. The rear shocks are pretty tough. See the difference in droop here? Oh, this is what yeah. we're talking about, mate, see? Yeah. So, S13 yeah. coilovers can fit in these cars. Doesn't necessarily mean that it works really well. Nothing. Literally nothing. I had a hanger. That hanger doesn't exist anymore. Oh, sorry, dog. It's 50 mil off the ground. Jesus. If anything's 50 mil higher than the road surface, that's the first leading edge. So it'll just smash the sway bar first. Yeah. And that. And while it looks super cool, my fear is to drive. Yeah, not look cool. Oh, no, you got to Oh, a little bit. You got Lowest point? Yeah, maybe 40, 30. Yeah, 28. Fuck it, hell. 28 mil from the ground, boys. It's called static. <laughs> Oi, what in the actual rack end? Oh, wow, look how low it is. It's yeah. already oh, yeah. at a point of like, yeah, it can't. Yeah. Ow! <laughs> um, are we gonna put some things on it or are you gonna deal with the standard S13 front lock, you reckon, for your first day? What do you reckon? You want to start with normal lock? I reckon. So it's literally get the hydraulic handbrake working, do all your oils, pull the kebab out of the um, gear shifter. <laughs> so we're going to put a bump stop in the front end and we're going to raise the car a little bit. Now that the initial inspection is done, this is the main to-do list. Number one, get car not running like shit. Replace the mass airflow meter, distributor leads, exhaust manifold gasket, plumb O2 sensor into manifold, and spark plugs. Also going to need front and rear shocks, an extended and mounted exhaust pipe, and a big one, some fucking brakes mate. Right now it's got nothing. And of course, we'll be also installing a dual caliper hydro brake, so we can go sideways around the bend. No doubt there's going to be more things to do as we dive deeper into the Drift R31. So we began with fixing the O2 sensor. All this has got to come off, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. this makes it easy. And we have also found a nut, look at that. That's literally how easy it is to have an O2 sensor, mate. Mm, beautiful. Right. Drill a hole in it, you put some mud That's around right. it, mate. Yep. Call up, get some Commodore calipers. G'day, mate. I was just after VN or VS calipers. Oh, yes. Okay, no worries, mate. No good on fern tree. Nothing that early, they said. Hey, mate, I was just after VN or VS calipers. Oh, mate, no worries. Dinosaurs. No. Nah. That's fucking crazy. <laughs> G'day mate, I was just wondering if you had any VN or VS uh, oh, rear calipers. Yeah. You got VS? Oh, beautiful. Are these the extractors? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'll whip them off and they increase stuff and weld a bung in for for the O2. And the ACL actually have some kind of idea of how much fuel it needs. Yes, yep. You were saying before you need the math going as well so they talk to get the issue is basically it wants to see a certain amount of fuel and the o2 sensor saying you've got no fuel because it's not in the exhaust right normally these fuck up anyway yeah it's pretty standard we'll check it out once this is all sorted and see if it fixes it give it a yep. oh god oh no fucking leaks yeah it leaks because there's no gasket <laughs> What a machine. Yeah, that's not helpful. <laughs> Fucking hell. Yeah, that's helps that. Eh? Yeah. They just gasket glue it, do they? Yeah. yeah. But not even like exhaust gasket. Normal gasket. So now that the manifold is out, I'm going to pass it over to Christoph. So this is where the O2 sensor is going to go.
Beautiful. Back in the main workshop, James is pulling the front two shocks out. Whilst he did that, it was time to get some Shockworks coilovers into it. But before we go installing them, we're going to go build these things. Just like that. Jimmy did a splendid job building these shocks. Dunno what's going on, but fuck it looked cool. So now, out with the old, and in with the new. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty great. Right, I'll start there. I'm gonna give you nines. One's a good place to start. Mm -hmm. Leave the front ends flat. As you switch, you don't get the front bite. It just generally makes steering smoother. It's a pain in the ass with the street because it picks up energy, but you don't have to worry about that. That's it. Yep. A two thousand dollar coilover is needed when you start drifting. Like probably not. Yeah. But it makes it way easier as you grow and as the car develops. We can always change the suspension and the setup. Yeah. So my car, I started and I pulled all the grip out of it, and then as I put more power into it, I can put more grip into the car. So as the car sort of changes, we can improve the overall setup. It'd be a good base to adjust from type of thing. Well, yeah, everything's adjustable, and you can yeah. pull it down and then change everything. So. Fuck yeah. Anyways, it was now on to the rear shocks. Yeah, yeah. We're definitely pulling those out. The question is if my spring is large enough to fit over that fucking thing. This is like the too soft what you're doing. Yeah. yeah. Like there'll be someone who said, mate, I've been running skid fourth gear, mate, let me tell you. But like, speaking from two track days of experience now, <laughs> um, I had tens in the back, and you mm. still just like top a third, throw it, and then three quarters through the corner, it just starts bogging down again. Because mm. they're not base height adjustable, the open length's too short. Yeah. This isn't gonna work. Yeah, yeah. Like properly. Could you do a drift A and like still have a little bit of fun? Yeah, but it's gonna cock the wheel out, it's gonna be, it's gonna be cunt to drive. Someone's gonna be like, no, it's fucking fine, just fucking send it. But like, the car doesn't have anywhere to release the wheel. So you either have to have it really low and then smash your sun, mm. or you're just gonna lift your wheel everywhere. Yeah. So I think we um, put these on Marketplace and give the money to uh, Royal Children's Hospital. And then we put yes. some new cord in there. The rear shocks are gonna be for another day. For now, we're getting back onto the engine misfire. We're missing replacement dizzy leads and the math. Conveniently, this old red thing exists. Chris owns his own R31 non-turbo drift car. So, we're going to leech bits and pieces from it to make it in time for the upcoming drift event. We're going to make it, alright? Whilst we've been gone, the boys have been busy. James had chucked on the new exhaust manifold gasket and of course installed the exhaust manifold, this time with that O2 sensor. Yep. It was time for a test run. Wasn't running perfect, but definitely was running better than before. We still need to change a few things, like the spark plugs, the dizzy leads, and the math. However, there's only so much time in a day. 
in saying that, it was a very productive first day at Shockworks. So yeah, we started packing up. Pushed her up a hill, under shelter. But fuck, yeah, we're gonna need some, we're gonna need some brakes, boys. The new shopping list consists of VS Commodore brake calipers, hydro brake, braided brake lines, dual caliper adapters, rear falcon discs, wheel nuts, and wheel studs. There was well and truly going to be more parts needed, but yeah, at this stage, they were unknown. As of course, with cars, they like to fucking surprise you, don't they? They're strange things, aren't they? So, I ordered the parts for us needed to progress, and we've got a whole three weeks left to get this half-built drift car ready for the drift event. So it should be a pretty cruisy finish line. All we need to do is wait a little while for Oz shipping. Praise the fucking Lord. We've only got four days left. Thanks to those guys, we got a bunch of skid tyres from Roadshine, some brackets and wheel studs from RB Factory, and some sick cunt shocks from the boys over at Shockworks. We'll be installing all these later, but for now, it's time to get this hydro handbrake up and running. So all we've got to figure out now is where we want the thing to place. So, yeah. So we adjust this little thing in here, yeah, and make it a little bit deeper. Don't get a video of this, it'll make me look shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. Look, oh, do, do a faster, man. Haven't you been doing bolts for years? No time lapse here, mate. <laughs> no, dude. <laughs> it's a 10 minute video of me just being like, no, nah, we're almost there, brother. We're almost there. No, nah, we're almost yeah. there. Whilst we sussed out the hydro brake positioning, James was onto the gear shifter surround. No shifter boot, no worries. Just buy some Aluka Bond and make your own fucking boot. Oh fucking hell mate, look at that. That nah, fucking Just take that on. Don't you just take that on. <laughs> Paint it black. Do another project. Look, I'm saving. Because it'd be nice if it was fucking over here, wouldn't it? Well, realistically, you kinda want it like fucking in that. Take the pen off. There you go. Yeah, there's a way we can make this cleaner. Because then if that goes in yarn. Yeah. Uh, now you got the fucking. Now you got the fucking. Give a pull. Give that a pull, man. Eh? Um, if we can try and fix that start button, that'd be fucking good. The start button is dodgy and works on and off. Sometimes works, sometimes doesn't. So we're gonna replace it. Check it out. The DIY shifter surround is in. This will help stop flying rocks and rubber smacking me in the face while I'm driving. Okay. So this is the most wiring I've ever done in my life. We're, we're gonna put two plugs into this. Fuck, that's huge. <laughs> Goes to that. So this, if you touch that, that'll kick it on. So this is the this is the switch here. So oh. we'll we'll tackle that. Well, you, you tackle this. Yeah. You tackle this. Yeah. Cool. I reckon. You reckon you got it? I reckon. Do we give him a diagram? Uh, do we um do we leave do we leave an eye or diagram on the table and tell him not to use it? <laughs> on my fingers. Are you recording? Yes. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't use the die grinder, all right? It's on the table. I won't use the die grinder. Wink, wink. I'm putting it on the table for when I return. <laughs> You're not to use it until I return. Okay, boss. Oh. Goes to this. Oh, then you are join out that hole, putting this switch in. Yeah. yeah right, Using okay. the die that. grinder. I that. Turns out we didn't even need the die grinder. Oh, H&S officer. You can fuck right off. Yeah, yeah like we just... You've, you've seen your tyres, yeah? Yeah. You know they're like pass belts though, yeah? Yeah, they're getting there, yeah. No, no, right no, there. no, like they're <laughs> underbelt. I'm a spiritual lyrical individual, spiritual lyrical. Whilst we're fixing the start button, in the meantime, James was working on setting up the rear brakes for the hydro system. Oh, so Test her out. Right, she's on. But 
Yes. Yep. Feel good on the finger? Oh, mate. Mate, 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 mate. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 the magic oh, oh. touch, mate. Get out of here, mate. <laughs> How's that, eh? Yep, beautiful. Oh, you fucking got there in the end. Now that that's done, it's time to mount the hydro. Oh, you're considering all the shit this came with. This was actually a ripper deal, eh? I thought so, like, yeah. All the turbo shit is actually worth money. Come on, then. Wet dough. Great grandfather. This was his boss, mate. Oh, See beautiful. that lathe? Great yeah. grandfather's. Yeah, it looks like it's from World War One or something. World War II. Yeah. World War II, World War II. yeah. yeah. You can use. Oh, that's yeah. fucking awesome. It's, it's literally central to the island. It's perfect. Mate, that's, so, that's, that's 50% less work. <laughs> you know what I think about working? Oh, I fucking love it shit. Look at me. I'm a psycho. <laughs> what else are you going to do? Ponder existence. Mm. Fuck that shit. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I'll... The Google's on. Oh, jeez. Oh, oh, his eyes are too close. Oh, my God. It's so oh, awkward. God. Oh, it's so awkward. Oh, 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 relax, brother. <laughs> All right. Hey, hey, fucking beautiful, mate. Test fitted the brake and made sure it was in the right place, then screwed her up to the plate. Are you fucking crazy? <laughs> What's going on here? It's, <laughs> it's past belt, <laughs> brother. Fucking... <laughs> yeah, I didn't realize that bad. I guess you might have to use some of those road shines early. That, that explains why every corner. Mm. Before we fully mount the hydro brake, we're going to make up some more DIY panels. This time for the fascia. What's the story? A Luca line. A Luca line. Perfect line. Perfect line, boys. Now you want to just fucking. Hey, hey, oh, look at that. Yeah. That's sad. Perfect. Oh, you fucking cut the line wrong, bud. No, that's alright. Fucking dog just. No, that's alright. That's the best fucking cut I've ever seen, brother. Oh, oh, you're just looking. Yeah, record this and give this to the OHS officer. You can fucking nice. Stay back! <laughs> right, that's not. <laughs> It's actually very satisfying. Oh, yeah. Very, very satisfying. <laughs> Dog. Dog sniffing my butt. Oh. Look at that. Alright. It's not perfect. It will do. It will. That's it a will fucking do. do. Didn't make Red Zuri. What happened? Oh, I got caught up making a fascia for the head unit. <laughs> right, you know? Whilst we were working on the panel, James here was drilling the new rotors to suit the R31 stud pattern. Oh, you fucking know exactly what you're doing, cunt. Did you already pull all the studs out? Except for one, so I can use it to like oh, it. Oh, hang on, what's going on with that then? Oh, hang on, don't fucking worry oh. about it. That's why. If you want to start business, mate, you just employ people a little better than you. <laughs> so, uh, here I am, coming through, not being able to do all this, and then I'm telling him what to do. Right? <laughs> well, what we could do, boys. Oh, yeah, i got a fucking idea, you can't. How's he going? Oh, that's actually nice. That's fucking nice! <laughs> I fucking like that. You have general mounts and shit. What type of mounts? What do you mean? What are you talking about? Um, fucking here. Oh, yeah. Well, for cameras and stuff. Yeah. Nah. Mm. Costs. Bloody beautiful. Oh, dog. Get it, dog. Stay. You stay. You cook it. Good dog. Oh no, you've got gears. You got long gears. Interesting. Might go back to second. Third well, and I fourth. I did not change out of second. I did not change out of third. Just throw it real hard in third, and then when it grips up, just give up. Just fuck. Yeah. You should be able to flick it up. You got a shockwork sticker for the uh, near the tail lot, kind of like yours? Yeah, we'll do that one. Yeah. I like that. Oh, another dog. Everything was coming along smoothly. Here you can see the dual caliper brackets from RB Factory have been installed and we've got the first Commodore caliper on. What's going on? Have we actually... 
You haven't driven this yet, have you? It's a bit loose. No. Nah. You can't have, because you don't have brakes. So we don't know how... The, hopefully the gearbox is good. Yeah. Here's our lines. Jimmy's just getting some fucking banjos for us. I've got to watch the Fs a little bit, don't I? Oh. How many Fs do you run this episode? Oh, do you try to minimise it? Mm. For the for the ads? It's... Fuck no. Nearing towards the end of day two, we had almost finished the hydro brakes. All that's left is to run the braided lines and to bleed the brakes. So then we're gonna put that and we're gonna put that there, mate. And then, and then fucking, damn it, do it again. Then we're gonna put that one over there and then we're gonna use cable ties because um, that's the correct, the special service tool. So this one's a little bit too short. Can't, I'd like to get that to there, but unfortunately it's not happening. So. Some of the best work I've ever done. Beautiful. Alright, there you go. Yep. It was now on to bleeding the hydro brakes. Tell me if it leaks, yeah? It's leaking, yeah. It's leaking? Yeah. Fuck. Fuck. On this side. Fucking AOK. -okay. Pump it up. Yep. What happened a bit of issues bleeding the hydro brakes? There's a very slight leak on one side. It's still gonna work. It's just not gonna be ideal. So you gotta right. like, oh, do really like double pump to actually get it to grab up. Shouldn't be using your handbrake anyway. You fucking pussy. I can't see any of it. Day two was a wrap. We completed the hydro brake system with new rotors, fixed the start button, and made those interior panels. Now, we've almost run out of parts, so tomorrow, I'll be due to do some more shopping. But remember, Tom's still ticking. Shed. Yep. Oh, good. Are you using our paint or your own paint? I've got my own paint. Oh, fuck, Not that Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> and can you push the clutch the whole way in? You're a bit bigger than me, this should be mint. This was my setting position, I like it all the way out, so yep. it should be mint for you. Yeah, that's pretty good, yeah. Try it out. Try it now. Sweet. Yeah. Oh, I mean, uh, yeah, maybe.
after having a late night on the 31, we got a bunch done. The highlight was getting the engine running better and installing new seats that won't fold my spine on impact. Saw this Shockworks customer's R33. I was rock hard. I had to include it. Anyways, enough more. Let's get back to it. We've got the shock set up, so it does that when you lift off. When you lift off, it goes, all oh, right, we're going that way. If you want grip, put your foot on the throttle. Not all the way, a little way. You want to get the weight back onto the rear. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, if you lift off, it's going to go the other way. So if you're like, oh, no, I'm going too much, what you actually want to do is apply a little bit of throttle to get the weight centered again. Because mm. as soon as you lift off, the car's going to slide wide on you. So if you're coming onto a wall and you're like, I'm going too close to the wall, don't lift off and get on the brakes. That's just going to slide you into the wall. Yeah. Because that's how we're going to make a car with no power slide. Otherwise, hmm. it's not going to slide. So to drive on the track, there's some rules and regulations. Your car's got to be able to pass scrutineering. One of those rules is having actual door cards, which we don't have. So we're going to make up some. A Luca Bond style. It's a lot of pain. It's satisfying. Just smacking the shit out of it. So good. Yeah. Some good shit. We haven't snapped that straight off. Oh, fuck. There you go. Looks pretty good. Yeah, you, you gonna be right to the other one? Yeah, I reckon. Everything was starting to come together. The dual caliper hydro brake setup was done, and the bucket seat harness was in. I then had another go at the front fascia. With so many different little pieces of the puzzle being completed, time was passing by very quickly. We were nearing the end of day four, with many loose ends still needing to be tied up. Yo, yo. Mate, the hoist life is good. I know, right? God damn. Yep. Just oils and tires and we're good. Hell yeah. It was getting late. To finish the night off, we finalised all the wheels with fresh new road shines. So, put those earmuffs on your ears. So I, I just hold it there, do I? And then when I say open that ball valve, rest this on the lip of the rim, and now you want to open that ball valve. Yep, this one. Yep, this pump way. it open as quick as you can. That way? Yep. That's it. You just popped the first speed, brother. Oh, hell yeah. Mate, pretty fresh. Look, he's about to pop, though. Don't jump again, eh? Here, he's just coming for you. Coming for you. Here we go. That's a nice, pretty side wall, mate. Fuck, that's sick. Good for another day. Good day. Got the old road shines. Road shines. 18560. 
But this is what I drove a quarter. And Day four was a wrap. Another big one. Tomorrow after we do the last bits, we will be taking it for its first proper test drive since I purchased it. Fingers crossed. Do a final bolt check because we haven't actually checked previous owners go. Yeah. So yeah. we'll just do every hard point and then do an alignment and fucking take her for a Test safety road. inspection. Yep. They're actually a solid card. While the boys worked on the customer cars, I worked on getting the door cards and the front fascia mounted. We'll be back on the hoist later. After all that and the wheel alignment, it was time to take her out, out on the mountains for the first test drive. We were hoping the gearbox and everything was fine because it's, yeah, never been driven before. Yeah, we left some wheels in the back. Not very mountain friendly. Um, fuck, should we do it? Hold up. Do you want to chuck a muffler in? <laughs> <laughs> After two days, you're like, actually, you're like, if we don't, get a earmuffs, earmuffs. <laughs> Yeah. 
decently fast, but I don't know if that's just you driving it. It's just because it sounds that. Yeah, yeah. It's not accelerating. Well, there you go. The safety inspection went well. The car is driving pretty damn good. Looks like we're gonna make it, boys. Drifting on the main track. This time, I'm driving and it's in my own car. Whilst the boys finished the 31 and installed that muffler, I headed home to pack my stuff and get ready for the weekend. I charged my cameras, moved footage off SD cards and got a trailer, then got the boys. Long story short, we made it over to the hotel located across the other side of Melbourne near Calder Park Raceway, arriving at midnight. The mish was complete. There was legit no time to spare. What a chaotic fucking week. A big shout out to the Shockworks boys for putting in the hard yards and overtime to get this half-built drift car done within five days while still running their own suspension business. A talented and switched on bunch of blokes who can have a good laugh and not take shit too seriously whilst meticulously getting shit done. I love it. Also, if there's any ladies watching, Tim is recently divorced, is single, and ready to do more than just mingle. Anyways, back in real time, it was 12 a.m. and we needed sleep since we gotta wake up early in the morning for my first ever drift event on a main track in a car I haven't even personally driven yet. Let's do this. Didn't I treat you right?